those and they're perfect for when I'm starving. I just need to eat something really good. Okay, I have one and share it to have it. I think that. Got him? Yeah. Okay, I love you. Love you, Mom. Love you, Bree. You got it. You got this. She does miss you. So, so much. What'd you say? I love Mommy so, so much. I love Mommy so, so much. How did you get so dirty so early in the morning? The phone is back on. <laughs> Love you. Bye. You know how you wanted to get everyone in bed last night before nine? Mm -hmm. We all did. Good job. What's that? Wilder's paint. Wilder's paint experiment. He just dumped out a whole bottle of acrylic paint. If you saw yesterday's video, I got rained out trying to make a step of progress on this house. The house is literally just torn to pieces. And we're living in this rental house up the hill. Uh, we tore the house up because of mold. So here we are. This is where we were yesterday. Okay, not too bad. Yesterday this was filling with water. And it actually looks pretty good today. Alright, that's great. The big thing is that the ditch for my footer didn't fill with water when it rained yesterday evening probably because I cleaned out this gutter on this end. And so it wasn't overflowing and then running straight into that ditch. The next step is carrying all this concrete up to the far side of the house so we can pour that footer. If nothing else on our YouTube channel, we've proven the utility of the minivan beyond that commonly conceived by the average American. No, don't be scared. We're gonna take such good care of you. This little minivan is a great little van and way tougher and with a better weight capacity to her little brother down there. And we have all the concrete moved up. We are pouring concrete. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm a little worried I won't have enough time, but this I think is my day to do it. Um, and so we're going for it. This is one of my favorite recipes because it's so simple, it's just the two ingredients, all natural ingredients, quickery and water. Well, I guess technically it's four ingredients. It's Portland cement, gravel, sand, and water. pretty desperate to roll this project forward. I didn't even film the progress I made yesterday, so I'll just kind of catch you up as we go. I'm really desperate to move this forward because I'm just fed up with this portion of this job taking so long. Um, this is concrete that I poured formed and poured into this wall because inside of here is a massive rock that goes straight into the ground that I couldn't dig out of my footer um, hole. All right, here's the other side. And this is this rock. It's like a spear that goes straight down into the bottom of my footer ditch. And I could not remove it. I did get the width and the depth and everything for my footer. 
but instead of cut block around this, I thought it would be a lot stronger just to pour concrete over it. So that's how that turned out. Pretty good, I think. Gracie is grabbing some tools. She's working on a project for her pigeons. You'll need that. You don't need that star chuck that's in there or um, that driver. You will need um, should be this one to take those out. Okay. Does that go right in here? Uh, yeah. Bring all those up and we'll cut some wood here in just a little for you, okay? So what I'm doing is actually replacing basically one foundation wall where we're gonna add some more weight um, because we're putting a loft in this house because the old footer wall was just insignificant. I'll show you what it looked like. Here's a section of the old foundation wall. Now, honestly, this bears very little weight because there's just a simple uh, one-story roof line sitting on it and this it's spanned with this massive beam. So it's worked, but it's not ideal. And over here, I'm actually adding weight. So I've completely replaced the footer, which is in place, but now I'm building a block wall up to my framing and I have some challenges. Challenge number one is this. Um, these supports I put in, I have to figure out how to get them out and set the weight back down on my wall and then build the wall where the supports are after I get them out. And then another challenge is uh, there's a chimney right here and that chimney is sitting on its own little footer, but it actually runs into the wall. So I had to pour footer under that footer. And now I have to build a wall through here, but block a block will not fit here. So I have to figure that out and put, <laughs> how do I do that? Anyway, it's basically this big puzzle and I have to do things in the right order. Um, or I could break the house, potentially get hurt. I'm not so worried about that. I'm worried about just setting the weight down wrong and like messing up the siding or just, or skewing things up if I move, um, if I drop it too much. So anyway, that's what I'm on. I'm honestly a little overwhelmed by kind of the complexity of the problem and just the weight and stuff. But I'm only overwhelmed because I'm trying to figure out everything at once. And the thing is, and this is widely applicable to life, I actually know what the next step is. Um, and I'll show you that now. Next step is I need to lay uh, four inch cat blocks on this section. So it looks like that over there and comes nearly up to the wood on top, but not quite to it. So I'm gonna start in this corner and I actually need to cut a cat block. I'm just trying to get an idea how long I need to cut it. Okay, so that would be 12 inches and I'm gonna go I could add two inches to that, so that's gonna be hard actually. I could cut it to 14, 13 or 14 inches and that would do that. I should probably find a masonry blade. I think I have one somewhere, but I'm just gonna do this the old fashioned way. It'll probably be just as fast as finding the masonry blade, which would take me a little while. So there's 12 inches and we're gonna go to 14 inches. Okay.
and I'll just kind of slip that through right there so when I go outside to lay this in a minute, it'll be there for me. And then I have to lay these four here, and there's one right there that I can lay. I don't know, maybe I'm just, maybe this is just helpful for me, but I find that just focusing in on those things that I can actually change is sometimes the very best thing to do when I'm overwhelmed by a situation. But sometimes that's all I can do. If I look at the big picture too much or all the time, I never get anything done. So. Right now, I'm just doing the next thing. Dinner is served. Start with this little corner uh, block that I cut and just get some mortar in that area. I'm not good at laying block. And laying block in these confined areas is, you just can't like, you can't lay it like you normally do. So there's actually no, no method for speed and efficiency. You just have to get everything where it needs to go. Okay, let's see if there's space here for this. I think we got it. Let's see if there's even mortar here. Now, because there's no headspace here, I can't just throw mortar on, so it's just, I have to painstakingly, like, drop it on these. There's no space for my trowel in here. So some of this ends up having to be done by hand, basically. I put the hose in here, buddy. Why? Because I wanted it in here. This is such a narrow squeeze here. I'm not even, I'm actually not sure if I can do it. I'm seriously not sure if I can get it in here on without smashing that mortar out. Oh, so I have to hold it up and then set it down on that mortar. I think I did good on that. The question is that I pu push out that back mortar, all of it. I think there's a joint there. Okay, that's good. I'm going for a super thin mortar joint here. Just smell that piney scent, Dad. Smell that piney scent. Uh -huh. Oh man, it's so tight. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that's how that turned out. And next, we're going to turn our attention to this one little hole here. I think I left enough room to squeeze one block in there. <laughs> I didn't think this through. How am I supposed to do this? I guess I'll just hold it as high as I can and kind of drop it. All right. All righty. That's kind of the idea. Okay, so I've got all my joints really nicely mortared and cleaned up, and we're just one step closer now to being able to set this whole thing down and then fill in all of the gaps here. Um, but it's not quite as simple as that. Okay, back at the rental house, I'm gonna share a little life hack for you. It's right here. 
I'm calling this a life hack because this is one of the simplest things you can do um, to just kind of break up the monotony of whatever your diet is, if there's any monotony to it, but just change of routine and it's really easy. This is a really basic dough. I just made, made it up as I go. Flour, oil, salt, water, that's it. And it's, we've kneaded it, you can tell it's ready. We've kneaded it for about 10 minutes, the kids did that. Arthur flour is my favorite flour, of course. And I'm gonna give you a little bit, you a little bit, you a little bit, you a little bit, you a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is make balls about the size of a large walnut. And you can start rolling them out. We're gonna have to take turns, guys. There's only two rolling pins, so you're gonna have to take turns. But what you can do in the meantime is use your hands to start flattening your ball that's about the size of a walnut. So you can use your hands and start flattening it out. See how flat you can get with just your hands. See how big you can get it without a rolling pin, Brighton. Can you do that for a minute? In the unlikely event that you have five, six, or seven kids and you don't have enough rolling pins and you're doing this as a group activity, you can always use a rolling pin alternative like a water bottle. Or um, you can also use some spaghetti sauce jars, some round jars, or a mason jar can work. Looking good, Joyful. I, I think you're ready to cook yours. Butt. I smush it with my butt. You're smushing it with your butt? You're one of the funniest people I've ever met. The same butt that you were sitting in mud with a little while ago. Yeah. That's just gross. All right, next step is get two pans warm, and you can you could use butter, but generally a dry pan will actually work well. And I'm going to turn that now that they're really hot. We're going to turn that to a medium low heat and just throw our flatbread. That's what we're making our flatbread in there. Um, you want it pretty hot. This pan's not hot. These pans are not hot enough quite yet. Have you guys ever so made flatbread before? So Hold on. Have you, you never had flatbread? I've had it, but I haven't made it. So this is something we've actually done many times, but it's been like five years, so. Oh, yeah. You might benefit from just shifting around a little bit, make sure it doesn't stick. And then you kind of got to go with intuition on this one, but at some point you're just going to grab it or use the spatula and flip it over. That's not quite done yet. Yours is not ready yet, show it to me. We're, let me help you with a rolling pin and we'll get it ready. Okay. You can throw yours in there nice and flat, okay? In here. Don't, yep, throw it in there and we'll make sure it's, all right, we're gonna make sure it's spread out nice and flat. And spin it around. A little guidance here on temperature. Basically, what we don't want is a pan that's just smoking like crazy, but you wanna be close to that point. So real nice and hot. This one's ready to flip over. You see a little browning there and smoking. That dry flour is smoking. We're gonna turn that down some. This one's done. Grace, will you break this up and share it out with people so we can try it and people can tell us what is it they think? Added? It's hot, yep. Break it up for everyone. All right, when you try it, when you taste it, tell me what you think about the flavor. Don't burn yourself too bad. Mm. Basically what you're gonna find is that you just made some bread and it's a flat bread. It's the most basic bread in the world. Probably as common around the world, I'm making this up, but it's true. When you look at the countries and their populations that commonly eat flat bread, it's probably as common as the leaven bread. Because all of India, much of, well, some of Asia, and pretty much all of Central and South America primarily eat flat breads. If I was naming this, I would call it a chapati. It's basically a flatbread. All right, good job, Joy. Beautiful. All right, is that one gonna fit in here? Yeah. Nice job. So basically anything that you could do with bread, you could do with this. You could go with like a traditional Indian dish. You could also go with peanut butter and honey, or you can do like a ham sandwich. You could fold them in half, you could layer them up, anything you wanna do, but it's super fun, super fast and it just adds a different um, you know, dynamic to your meal, texture, flavor, and everything. And it's actually really fun as well.